Wait, what is this thing? There's just no way. This has to be cheated. Right? Yep, you're right. Thanks for watching. Of course, there wouldn't be any fun in making a video if this was done using cheats. But if that's not the case, then how? How exactly is all of this possible? Welcome back to the laboratory, everyone. This time, we're going over one of the buggiest games ever made and breaking the containment chamber on some of the lab's most volatile specimen. Let's have a look. About 25 years ago, Nintendo and Game Freak released the first Pokemon games for the Game Boy, and it didn't take long before people were finding all sorts of bugs and glitches. The most notorious of these was M or Missing Now, which is a glitch Pokemon that can typically be found off the east coast of Cinnabar Island in red and blue. Just like other glitch Pokemon, Missing Now is never supposed to be seen in normal play, so initiating a battle with one can have unintended consequences. One of the consequences for Missing Now is to add 128 to the value of the player's sixth item. It's not hard to see why this is so beneficial, just about any item that's hard to come by can be duplicated. Rare candies to level up, master balls to catch more Pokemon, nuggets for a chance at buying that shiny bicycle, the list goes on. But what about these glitch Pokemon make such strange effects occur? To break it down, a glitch Pokemon is a collection of data that, for some reason or another, is interpreted by the game as a Pokemon. There were originally only 151 monsters, but there are many more in the game's data. There's a total of 256 values for the Generation 1 Pokedex, with Missing No being one of these dex entries that are hidden from the player's view. On top of that, there are actually several different types of Missing No, which make up 39 of the garbage data slots. If there was a method to cause unintended battles, the player could force an encounter with monsters from these glitched entries. Tricks like the Old Man and Cinnabar Island exploits are the typical methods to encounter missing now. When making use of both, the game is forced to load a set of wild Pokemon that don't appear in casual play. This set will use the trainer's name to determine what Pokemon appear and what level they will be. Choosing a preset name has slightly different effects than a custom name, but either method will result in at least one missing no being placed in the set. Using this file name, I can run into a level 241 Alakazam and Cinnabar. Yeah. There's also whatever this is. As previously mentioned, this set isn't normally accessible in gameplay, but due to an oversight in the programming of some water tiles, an exploit can be used to encounter Pokemon from this data set. These water tiles on the right coast of Cinnabar are not set to always spawn Tentacool and Tentacruel. Rather, they end up working as grass tiles and will use the last set of wild Pokemon that were encountered in a patch of grass. For example, let's say I travel to Fuchsia City and visit the Safari Zone. I get into a grass encounter in the first area and I exit. If I went right to Cinnabar without getting into another battle, I would find Pokemon from the Safari Zone's first area in the coastline. Now there's no restrictions and I can use my team to battle. This is aptly named the Fight Safari Zone Pokemon trick, but it can be used to find Missing No and some other glitch Pokemon as well. Talking to the old man and watching the Pokeball tutorial in Viridian will change the last encounter to this glitched data set. 
The reasoning for this has to do with the player's name being swapped for the cutscene, as the name gets temporarily stored in the grass encounter data. Traveling to Cinnabar afterward will let you find monsters from that set through the bugged water tiles. This is great for making item duplication easy, but we are limited to what Pokemon can be spawned from the glitch set. To expand on what kinds of Pokemon we can catch, we'll need to make use of a different exploit, the Trainer Fly Glitch. The Trainer Fly Glitch requires two things to start. The first is a long-range trainer that hasn't been defeated. A long-range trainer is one that will immediately notice the player when appearing on screen. The most common trainers for this are the Gambler outside the Underground Tunnel on Route 8 and the Junior Trainer west of Nugget Bridge. The second thing that is needed is a Pokemon that can take the player back to a Pokemon Center with Fly, Dig, or Teleport. If the Start button is pressed while walking directly into the view of a long-range trainer, the menu will be open before the player can be noticed. During this time, an escape move can be used to get away from the battle, but the trainer will still notice the player before leaving. After escaping, the player will notice that there are some strange properties to activating this glitch. For starters, many interactions won't work. The player can't communicate with NPCs, including the nurse at the Pokemon Center. The start menu is also locked. So what's going on this time? During normal play, the game is usually in a state where it's checking the player's position and comparing it to other trainers' line of sight. This state is referred to as Check Fighting Map Trainers. If the game determines that the player is in a trainer's line of sight, an exclamation point appears above the trainer's head and the state is changed to this. Much as the name implies, this state handles the trainer walking up to the player, speaking, and initiating the battle. Once the battle is over, the state changes to end trainer battle, and then reverts back to the first state. There are a few differences to this depending on special conditions, but this is accurate for most trainer NPCs. So when escaping from a long range trainer, the state of check fighting map trainers runs for one frame before the player escapes. The game recognizes that you're in a trainer's view, causing an exclamation point to appear. At this point, the game has already changed states. This is the explanation for the odd behavior. The game is currently expecting a trainer to walk up and speak to the player. As such, the state can be reverted back to normal by engaging with any trainer that walks at least one tile. If the trainer has no room to walk up to the player, the game will become stuck in a permanent loop, causing a soft lock. After exiting the battle, the player will regain access to the menu and the ability to interact with NPCs. So why is this important? Well, the trainer fly glitch is the first step of the ditto glitch also referred to as the Mew Glitch. This exploit can be used to encounter just about any monster that exists in the game, including many of the Glitch Pokemon. Because of this, Missing No can still be found in yellow, even though the Cinnabar coastline has been fixed in that version. After performing the Trainer Fly Glitch, escape to an area near a trainer that can walk up to the player and be battled. After winning the fight, return to the original route and the start menu or a text box will open causing a battle to begin once the dialogue is closed. This is essentially the game's way of correcting itself after the trainer fly glitch was performed. The resulting battle will pit the player against a low level Pokemon, but how can we be sure of what will appear? This is where things get a little trickier. The game will attempt to pull battle data based on the last encountered monster, so the key here is actually the special stat of the last opponent Pokemon. For example, a special stat of 1 will cause a Rhydon to appear, and a special stat of 21 will cause a Mew to appear. Now, this may sound difficult in practice, but it's made easier by utilizing Ditto, a Pokemon that can copy the stats of any monster it encounters. If the player knows which special stat values will give which Pokemon, monsters can be quickly raised with rare candies and calcium for the desired special stat. The player can then encounter a ditto after stabilizing the trainer fly glitch and allow it to copy that Pokemon before fleeing. This will ensure a favorable outcome when returning to the original route. Through the use of this glitch, 
Trading is no longer a necessity to complete the Pokedex. The three starters, the four tradables, and each of the version-specific Pokémon can be encountered through this process. But what else could we find if we dig deeper? By utilizing the glitches and methods previously explained, the game has been blown wide open. The player now has access to near-infinite items and the ability to catch almost any monster. From a casual perspective, there isn't much else the player could ask for. There are quite a few glitch Pokémon that can be caught with the Ditto trick, but many of them don't have a practical use or can corrupt save data. But, there is an even crazier glitch Pokémon that can be discovered with the right conditions. This is the abomination known as Q. Q is an evolution of another glitch Pokemon, called 4-4 High. It's an incredibly bizarre monster with even stranger properties. Q only appears in yellow version, but its red and blue equivalent, Charizard M, has many of the same properties as Q. Charizard M has the typing of, well, a Charizard, while Q has the typing of a Starmie. They are two separate Pokemon, but Q will become a Charizard M if traded to red or blue, and a Charizard M will turn into Q if traded to yellow. To obtain Q, the player must perform the Ditto glitch in yellow version with a Pokemon that has a special stat of 192. This will cause a wild 4-4 high to appear. After catching this glitch Pokemon, feed it a rare candy and it will evolve into Q once it is above level 6. Now why can't we just perform the Ditto glitch to encounter Q? That's because monsters with an index number above 201 appear as glitch trainers instead, and Q's index value is 255, well over the 201 limit. As soon as 44 High evolves into Q, it will automatically nickname itself to TM55. But the oddities are just beginning. Q and its counterpart will both be interpreted as a cancel button when shown in the party or PC box. Due to this, Q and any Pokémon beneath it will be invisible to the player. One side effect of this is that any Pokémon beneath Q cannot be healed at the Pokémon Center. This is because the game recognizes Q as the end of the list, so to speak. If there are six Pokémon in the player's party, and Q is in the second slot, going to a Pokémon Center would only heal the first monster in your party. It's important to understand that the game cannot properly detect anything below Q, as that's what makes this next exploit possible. If there is more than one monster below Q in the PC box, messing with the positions of those Pokémon can merge their data and create what are referred to as unstable hybrids. The end result is one Pokémon being given the stats and moves of another. This is because the Game Boy games use two different memory bytes for the species of each Pokémon. Since the game cannot properly handle Pokémon beneath Q in the menu list, only one of the two bytes gets flipped. Let's take a look at this example. The safest way to perform the glitch is by using an empty PC box. Start by depositing any normal Pokémon, in this case, I'll use an Onix. Then, deposit Q, followed by a recipient Pokemon, we'll use Caterpie, and a donor, Mewtwo. This is what the PC box currently looks like, but the only things viewable are Onyx and the cancel button. If we withdraw Onyx from the PC box, it will cause all the Pokemon below it to move up one slot, but only one of the two species bytes are moved. Mewtwo's data will merge with the leftover data of Caterpie, Caterpie will merge with the leftover data of Q, and Q will remain unchanged. When withdrawing these Pokémon from the PC, start with the bottom of the list, as this will avoid any further corruption. And here are the results. We've just turned a tiny worm into a huge threat. But there's just one problem with this. As their name implies, these hybrids are unstable. If you attempt to transfer them to a different game, they will be reverted back to the original species. Viewing these monsters in Pokemon Stadium's lab and saving will have the same effect.
However, one solution is to evolve the unstable hybrid. Since the Pokemon will evolve, both of the species bites will be forced to change. The stats of the Pokemon will be corrected, but they will retain their moveset from their hybridized state. Losing the stats is unfortunate, our buff bug is no longer what we had in mind, but keeping the moveset is still a big deal. The other solution is to teach moves while in the hybrid state. For this example, we'll use a recipient Mewtwo and a donor Pidgey. After performing the Q glitch, the Mewtwo will have the learn set of Pidgey and can be taught fly. From there, the species bites can be corrected in a few ways. One method is to deposit and withdraw the Pokemon from the daycare. Another is to view and save the Pokemon in Stadium or Stadium 2's laboratories. Either way, Mewtwo will revert back to its original self, but will retain the move fly. Through this variation of the exploit, any Pokemon can be taught any move regardless of its ability to evolve. One specific reason that I chose this example was to showcase that Mewtwo actually has its own animation for a flying attack in Stadium. Take a look. When this glitch is used to its full potential, the player can give Pokemon powerful moves they should not possess, such as moves that grant attack bonuses. For example, Dragonite, Scyther, and Charizard could make use of Drill Peck, which is arguably one of the best flying type moves in the first games. A Snorlax with Explosion would get an attack bonus for one of the game's most brutal moves, a daunting total of 510 base power. A heavy special hitter like Alakazam can be equipped with elemental moves for extended type coverage or amnesia to boost its stats. Electric Pokemon like Jolteon can be given moves that assist them with type disadvantages or recovering health. And one of my favorites, an Electrode loaded with the three one-hit KO moves and Thunder Wave to ensure a first strike. Keep in mind, these Pokemon have been stabilized after editing their move sets meaning they can be traded to Generation 2 games or used in stadium tournaments with no issues. And so, we have completely destroyed a set of games without using a single cheat code. And why would you need to? When the player can obtain as many items as they want, fight any monster they want, and give those monsters any moves they want, using something like a Game Shark seems pointless. Another glitch worth mentioning is the item 8F, which can be used for arbitrary code execution. While this is another fascinating topic, it's extensive enough to be its own video. But the thought of using a cheat device stuck in my head for a while. Was there anything entertaining or useful that I could only do with the help of a Game Shark or similar accessory? That'll be our next experiment, so be sure to subscribe to get notified when I post more content. Thanks for stopping by the lab, everyone. See you next time!